Hey, movie fans, and welcome back to another episode of the Uncharted Media Podcast. Don't you just love Audible's? No, not the not the audio platforming service, but um, <laughs> could you imagine this is how we announce how we're sponsored by Audible? That would be <laughs> like every other great. internet connect. Can no, no, this whole episode more or less just kind of got thrown out the window in less than an hour before we started recording this. Um, so there's been a lot of trailers this past week, and we were initially going to talk about trailers, and we'll we'll still talk about the trailers in the news section, but then Correct. this massive, massive Hollywood Reporter article came out about the whole DC universe going forward, and we're going, oh no, that's not a news topic, that's a full-fledged discussion, because yes, holy crap, there's meat on this bone that James Gunn is just... Oh boy, there's a lot to, there's a lot to discuss here, as there's there massive is, shakeups yeah. and, um bickering and behind the scenes stuff so that's bye bye trailer talk that we were gonna we'll circle back to that discussion a later day but yeah we're gonna talk about this massive hollywood reporter article that came out uh, about the future of dc and also the whole bunch of trailers that dropped at ccxp the past mm -hmm. weekend but uh josh how are you doing tonight <laughs> i am chilling we are uh, for for those watching the video i've got the full forehead in effect today uh for whatever reason decided to not wear hat um but yeah, man, it's, it's you know, I'm chilling. <laughs> this is like the, the article. It is definitely like one of those things. I was like, um, oh, okay. Why? I don't know why we're dropping this at seven in the evening, but sure. Whatever. As we'll like, get into it. I think someone over at the Hollywood Reporter saw the rock just getting all pissy on Twitter earlier today. I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? No, no, no. It's we ain't time doing this. to set. Yeah. Yeah. We ain't doing this now. Uh, but we'll, again, we'll get all into all that. But, uh, Josh, you watching anything recently? um yeah well yes and no um first things first i finished reading american gods by neil gaiman so that was that was cool that was a fun experience my first book by him um and i finished the main storyline of god of war with ragnarok so Ooh, and? That, dude it's so stinking good like i I'm still collect like, still collecting my thoughts. Also, because I j I heard there's a second ending once you once you hundred percent the game, um. So that's gonna be something I chase here pretty soon. Naturally, um, naturally. Um. But I did with the release of uh the new Will first two episodes of Willow on Disney Plus. Um. I love fantasy, so I thought I'd check it out. I had never seen the original movie, so I I know of it because of like. Um, with a quarter crew talking about like all the stuff that they did with the CGI and stuff like that. Um, so I thought I'd check it out, see what it, see, see what it had to offer. Um, I don't, <laughs> it's not bad. Let's do that. It, it's not bad. Um, but it is definitely like, a show that is stuck in 90s fantasy uh or or the the version of fantasy that L george lucas wants to write um and s that kind of makes it endearing but also annoying at the same time so i it, it, well I, i'm gonna give it at least a couple more episodes to cut before i write it off completely but um it, you <laughs> you can tell it's 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 a George Lucas idea, unfortunately. Originally, I don't think he's attached yeah. to this new one. I don't think he is, as far as I'm aware. But I wouldn't be surprised if he was a producer of some sort. But like, oh yeah, you don't have to do anything to be a producer nowadays. It, correct. I mean, I'm a producer. Um, but uh, that's not you true. want that title? You want that title? <laughs> <laughs> now, now, the Uncharted podcast, hosted by Nathan and his producer. <laughs> We we can make that happen. There are no rules here. Well, we make up the rules, and the points don't matter. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I've done this week, really. I mean, I've been right doing some writing and stuff like that, and doing some more reading. I'm trying to get 25 books before the end of the year, and I am five short right now. So I'm like, how can I? How can I? How, how can that I? That is when you find this? the shortest books possible. <laughs> I, I literally, I was like, oh. I have the four editions, uh, four volumes of uh, Paper Girls. It's a comic book. I was like, that I haven't read. I can do those and include those, close those on there. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's but, how you do it. So, Find the yeah, shortcuts. It uh, I only watched one thing because I was a little, a little busy this past weekend. Um, but I've got Christmas break soon, so I'll probably watch some stuff then. 
Uh, I watched something that people have been telling me for most of this year. Like, oh, you got to see, you got to see. It's the like one of the best horror movies of the year, which surprised me because I thought all the trailers for Smile looked terrible. Yeah, it looked like a January horror release. Josh, you will poop your pants. It's actually scary. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. (laughs) It's a different type of scare than like Sinister. But I, I both love and hate how unrelenting this movie is like there are no times that the character is safe anytime you're just like all right there's no scare oh god oh god (laughs) okay that was not okay like there's some genuinely good scares um you never know what is real and what is hallucinations it is it's somewhat similar to the babadook in that it clearly is a stand-in for other messages mm-hmm. while still being terrifying oh god oh god yeah it will it probably won't be my favorite horror movie i've ever seen but it's probably one of the best of this year by far and definitely one of the scariest that i've seen in quite a while of going oh no thank you which <laughs> again the trailers did not wow me but this movie does not let up it is genuinely creepy and scary i'm going oh no it's good to hear though because isn't that like that was like paramount only right uh in theaters yeah but now it's on paramount plus oh god that's so crazy to me that uh, like paramount again doing what they can to to stay on top man uh that's cool though i'll have to add it to the list of horror movies that i didn't see this year that i need to, to watch yeah i think you would very much enjoy it now, this past weekend was CCXP, which I believe is Brazil's big Comic-Con, and we weren't expecting much. And then they just go, <laughs> here's a bunch of stuff, except for DC stuff, but uh, there might be of reasons. Of course, well, but there's reasons for that. <laughs> but there's a reason for that. Uh, but we'll first, by starting off, we'll start off talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 trailer. And I'll be honest, of all the trailers that dropped at CCXP, I think this is the best. Like, the job of a trailer is to get your anticipation and just bump it up. I was at least curious about Guardians because I liked the first one quite a bit. I was very much disappointed with Guardians 2, but Mm -hmm. I chalked it up to James Gunn was going through a lot in his own personal life at the time. So maybe he was, maybe his mind was elsewhere and he couldn't like hone in as as well as he could in the first one. But then The Suicide Squad came out, and I absolutely love that. It's my favorite DC movie so far. Uh, Peacemaker's fantastic. So I was like, all right, maybe James Gunn is evolving his style as a director. It's like, mm-hmm. all right, I'm getting more and more on board with Guardians 3. Then this trailer comes out. Guys, I don't think I'm ready for how much I'm going to cry in this movie that I was not <laughs> expecting to cry in. Yeah, Because, yeah. like, they're clearly going for a, you better get ready to say goodbye to these type of characters. And we kind of figured there's one character in particular that I've been saying since Endgame has a big old target on the back of his head, but we'll talk about that in a little bit here. Mm-hmm. This is a much more emotional story than I was expecting. And once again, Jeep's gone with the perfect music selection. Like, oh, I'm I'm very much looking forward to seeing what music he brings to the DC universe, but yeah. the music was perfect. The camera work looks outstanding. My only complaint, and this is super nitpicky, I don't know how I feel about Adam Warlock's design. It's <laughs> it's very much an MCU design. I'll say that. Um, yeah. But besides that, oh, oh, this trailer got me in the feels and I was not expecting to be got in the feels. Josh, Guardians Volume 3 trailer. What'd you think? It Yeah, it, it definitely caught me off guard. It definitely, like I, like you, loved the first one. The second one is fine but good it's it's not like definitely not to the level of the first one is but it's still it's watchable um the and so like the definitely because of all the projects that james the james gun has been doing up to this point there definitely was some a, um some anticipation on my part here as well but um i was not emotionally ready for what actually ended up happening in the trailer um definitely uh gonna hit hard in the in the fields which is something that we heard from what was it san diego comic-con where they 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 did show it to the to the to the people in the room and they 
they were basically saying like, yeah, this is going to be a lot more emotional than the, than the first two. Um, I also like coming off on the heels of the, if you haven't seen the guardians of the galaxy holiday special, it's fantastic. And it definitely like more of that, please. Uh, but like the, um, having that, knowing that mantis is going to be existing in this movie as well. It's like, it, it definitely going to be a lot more emotional um, to say the least. Uh, now um, the thing with the Adam Warlock st- is, and like, I understand pausing is a thing, but you do like, even if you pause it, it is, he's there for barely a second or two. So I would be, I'm, I'm a little bit more forgiving on that just because you don't, you we really don't see much of his design. Um, that being said, boy, be looking jacked. Um, uh, so, but yeah, man, I, I think, um, do you want to get into kind of what we're because of the trailer with our predictions? As yeah. Far as let's get into some theories happen? here. Cause boy, so there's, I, you can formulate a lot of theories here. You can absolutely. I, I will not be surprised if rocket does not make it out of this movie. Um, I also would not be surprised if Drax does not make it out of this movie. Um, I think, Personally, I think the only people that are getting out of there alive is potentially Groot, Mantis, and Star Lord, and that's it. If that, um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is like an actual true goodbye in some way, shape, or fashion. So, uh, before I get into my predictions, I almost forgot about this. How good do their uniforms look? Ah, uh, yes. Like, <laughs> oh my god. The only thing missing is I need Star Lord to have that classic comic book accurate full helmet, and then yes. my life will be complete. Because I love how they look. It looks so good. Um, uh, now for my theories. I don't think you're far off with Rocket. I have been saying since Endgame, I think Rocket is the prime candidate to die. And it's, and it's only been solidified by further things that James Gunn has said and by this trailer. He's like, yeah, we'll delve more into Rocket's backstory. I'm going, oh boy. That's like saying I'm one <laughs> day away wait. from retirement. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But also, you got to look at it from the lens of Rocket's been around a lot longer than the rest of his teammates in terms of almost all of them got dusted away except for him yeah. and Nebula. So he's had a little bit extra time to shine. And maybe I'm just trying to think of like, oh, let's get everyone's screen time equally. And I know that's not how it works, but I'm just like, I think Rocket has had. He's more primed for this great arc of being where he yeah. is in the first one too. that beautiful line of I'm done running, Pete. And I'm going, you're not calling him Quill. You're actually calling him by his first name I'm going. Oh, no, yeah. stop it. Um, but also it looks like he's on some operating table of like, we'll all fly away one last time. Go ahead. Stop it. Into the great forever. Oh my God. And also, I mean, Fantastic. we meet his otter girlfriend and I'm, which I'm super stoked for. Of like course you are. She's like, okay, you know what? <laughs> I, I, okay. I know. I understand. Okay. <laughs> but I'm just excited to see like rocket, um, react affectionately to someone that's not made of bark. Um, which Groot looks fan- like super cool. He, it's boy, still kind of like, weird to me. I'm still the- getting used to it. I'm still <laughs> getting used because it's again, people disclaimer. It's a different Groot than what we got in the first Guardians back in right. 2014. Exactly. It is his son. That Groot that we know from the first one is dead and has been since 2014. This is a different one. So more or less, you could say Rocket is his dad type of thing. Yeah. Um, which is gonna he be is horrible. Jacked. Man he, is on the gas. <laughs> yeah, he is. But I'm just already imagining when Rocket dies, the we are Groot that'll come out of Groot when he does. Because or, I think Rocket is the prime candidate to die. And I think I've thought that for years. And I was just further thinking that even more. Very close behind, I think, is Drax. Now, there's a couple mm-hmm. fake outs of like misdirections here of who could die. I think Rocket's the most obvious. There's that shot in the trailer where it looks like. Drax has been shot through the chest. I'm like, mm-hmm. that seems like it could be a bait and switch. But also, with how much Batista badmouth Disney, I wouldn't be surprised. If yeah. Like, you can kill him off because Batista's made it very clear of, I will finish this movie for Guardians for James, and then I'm getting the heck out of Disney. And Disney's going, okay, fine with us. Um, However, I think there's one other candidate that might be a long shot. But I think after Drax and Rocket is the highest likelihood of dying. And that's Star-Lord. 
I think... Uh, yeah, I can see that too. I think just his arc of becoming an actual natural leader of... Just from seeing the little snippets of him in the holiday special and how he interacts in Love and Thunder, which I hated, but I actually like the Guardians for the most part in that, he feels much more like he's becoming his own natural leader as opposed to just kind of making stuff up on a fly. He feels like the connective tissue that's holding this dysfunctional family together. So I could maybe see him dying, but then like Adam Warlock takes his spot somewhere on the roster. Maybe Gamora becomes the leader of the Guardians, and then you've got Kraglin still there kind of taking on a bigger role. I think those three are the most likely to die. I don't think Nebula's dying. Gamora's already no. died once, so she's not going to die again. Same thing with yeah. Groot. Groot's not going to die again. You better not kill Mantis. <laughs> no, yeah, because Mantis is like she has my heart and soul now. Mantis like, is precious. She is seriously one of the best parts about the holiday special. Um, I, and oh man, besides, I, I, I wouldn't be re ready for that. Besides the gorgeous visuals and the fantastic music choice, I think my favorite part about this trailer is seeing Drax dodgeball child in the face. Like I <laughs> laughed so hard at that just going oh that's wonderful <laughs> i said i love the, the last line in the trailer too after this like really like in typical gun form um this really serious Why emotional make it so moment sad? yeah yeah <laughs> i just want to kill one guy one guy yo you're not gonna kill anybody but he's gonna be sad and nobody will miss him <laughs> like oh God. It, it, it'll be a good time no matter what Speaking of sad and no one will miss him. That's Oosh. no, I'll, I'll miss him when he's gone. Indiana Jones and now titled the dial of destiny dropped its trailer at CCXP. Uh, I wasn't overly surprised about this because we kind of figured it had to drop sometime before yeah. avatar two or at the very latest during avatar two's premiere because James Michael said we get it before the end of the year. So the trailer is here and to me, it's a very mixed bag. I think <laughs> when it hits, it's great. John Williams, John Williams flexing his muscle, unfortunately, for the last time, because he said that this is the last movie he's going to score, to which I'm just going, I'm actually more not ready to face that reality than actually saying goodbye <laughs> to Indiana Jones. Like, whatever. Uh, like, sure, it's sad that it's the last Indian movie, but it's more sad that this is going to be the last John Williams movie. Um, The score is great. And there's certain action beats that I think are great. But. De-aging is still not quite there yet. And I'm hoping we don't have a ton of de-aging in this. But sometimes it's great. They're like, there's a shot of him when he's got like a reddish, orangish light on him when he's inside of a train. Mm -hmm. That looked perfect. That looked scary good like yeah that looked like a young harrison ford then you have the part where he's kidnapped by nazis and they take the bag off his head and i'm going oh yeah is it the eyes is it in the words of corridor crew is it the elasticity is this is the skin not wrinkling enough <laughs> it, something was yeah. off on that section but besides that i think it hits the right notes for indiana jones in some spots like when he uses the whip it's like get back and then everyone points everyone the gun and his gun. the look on his face i'm like that that's indie that's great um i will say it was a bit odd because for the past few weeks james mangold has been like praising just like yeah we really wanted to go with physical stunts and practical effects for this just like the classic indian jones we really didn't want to use cgi where we didn't have to this same kind of cgi heavy like you get that scene from the first Captain America in the, in the middle of the Alps on top of a train. I'm going, this looks a little cg -ish. Guys, that's CGI. He's not actually on a train. Uh, or the <laughs> one that was a little jarring besides the sack getting taken off Indy's head in the flashback scene. It's when they have that parade in the middle of New York and Indy's on the back of a horse. The way his head moves, I'm going, oh, oh, that that's clearly not Harrison Ford on that. You've, you've rendered his head separately. I like this trailer, but it still needs some polish, I think. What do you think, Josh? <laughs> I uh, Obviously, I am nowhere near the, as big of an Indiana Jones fan as you are. Um, I... Uh, it was cool. Yeah. 
Be I'm honest. Gonna, you can be honest, Josh. It, it was it was cool. I, I'm not gonna say it wasn't a bad trailer. Um, I think I will be based on the trailer. I will see the movie, but I it, I do think that the trailer doesn't good, do a good job at all to kind of tell you anything about what the movie's about. Um, it's it is definitely like, hey, you know, this is indie indie's like final go. Oh yay, cool. Uh, here's some music. All right, cool, go, 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 go. <laughs> like it. it it definitely is leaning on the this is uh Harrison Ford's final indie movie um but I don't feel like it actually tells us anything else and part of me is okay with that part of me is kind of like I I want to know I want to know more tell well, that's me a more good thing I think I think yeah this is just a teaser trailer though keep in mind that that's that's fair that's fair um everything looks pretty good I mean I I obviously there's a few little little things with the de-aging that um Honestly, I will applaud their cojones to be like, hey, we're gonna put a trailer together. Do you wanna do some of like the the like the the regular Harrison Ford stuff or like do add in our de-aging fo- footage that's still finishing rendering? Uh hey, go ahead and do all the finished like the all the do, do what you do have finished for the de-aging stuff. Okay, I guess I guess we'll do that. Yes, then. Some of it like, looks finished, I, some of it not. That is very, very ballsy, but that also to me says Hey, this is not going to be the whole movie, and so that that re- for that reason we have to protect the rest of the film just so you don't know what's going on. Um, I'm curious of what you think that the Dial of Destiny is in reference to, though. I was just about to ask, what did you think of the title? Um, it, so there's been rumors of like time travel plot for Ooh. a little bit, and I'm just going, I hope not. Um. So, no cgi but time travel plot <laughs> i would be okay if it's not necessarily time travel but it is a dial that you can control time with like if indy doesn't actually go back in time but the person that has it i.e the nazis can control time itself or control time yeah. I, I would be okay with that so long as we don't actually go back in time i think that's jumping the shark but something that controls time in a movie about an aging person i think could be a really interesting narrative and subtext of just like oh yeah time is literally not on your side type of thing and it might be a little (laughs) too heavy-handed there but we've seen james mangled focus on characters who are in the twilight of their lives so i trust him with this movie but again i I don't mind if it's a time thing because Indiana Jones has always been a little bit far fetched. You had the Ark of the Covenant, in which case it's it is a radio for speaking to God, and then you've got a <laughs> goblet that literally heals you. Yeah, let's not do that. Let's not do that accent again. That, was, um, I, that wasn't your best. <laughs> it's, that's how he sounds. Those the problem. I know. I know. I know. I know. But you hear. Um, you see, Dial of Destiny. What do you think of the title? <sighs> The problem is I've just read a bunch of like, uh, you know, I've just finished God of War. I just read American Gods. So like me, I hear Dial of Destiny and I start to think of like um, something to do with the fates. You know how like in Grid the Grink Pantheon has the three fate sisters and like um, the the <clears throat> the um, Norse Pantheon has the Udin and stuff like that. It's like this di- idea that something else is out there dic- dictating your fate or destiny, um, which is still, I think, something that would fit in with um, with an aging indie. Um, it could be interesting. I, I'm curious to see who. Um, oh, geez, I, she's I love her, but I forget her name all the time. But I forget her. BB Waller Bridge. I'm you know, curious. Yeah, the character that's already controversial, unfortunately. For some reason, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure why. Um, I'm, to me, I'm curious to see who she is to Indy and in the story. Um, it's interesting to me that they're already having to be like, guys, she's not taking over for Indy. Chill out. Like, shut up. Like, <laughs> it, it annoys me that the people are like ah. Because it happened to Shy, it happened to Shy in, in, in the Kingdom of Crystal Skull. There were there were a lot of people did not give him a chance, did not. And I think honestly, if they had ended up giving him a chance, Shy LaBeouf could have been a fun. His career would look so much different if he was allowed to do like a solo in like new indie film. Well, his but, career would have been different had he taken a lot of different what ifs. I mean, that is also fair, but I, yeah, 
I like seeing Sala. I thought was I was not expecting to see him come back. Yeah. Uh, I will say Dial of Destiny to me sounds a lot more like an Indiana Jones book than it does a movie. Like how they had like dozens upon dozens of yeah. like the I don't ever think they were canon, but like Indiana Jones and the uh, the Temple of Gold or on the Dial of Destiny it does, on it Wigan does, Angels yeah. or something like a, I don't some obscure like Dial of Destiny. I don't know, but it, it I appreciate that it's not just Indiana Jones and it does have a subtitle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely feel like it has a like a like a black and white movie adventure movie feel to the name of like nah, I'm not presenting the Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny like that to me that fe- that has like an older feel to it and you know maybe they f- play into that if we're having a story about time who knows it was an okay trailer a teaser trailer i'm curious to see what it looks like going forward and it'll be very sad to see john williams not in the mu- the, the movie scoring mm. world anymore indeed so I said Guardians was my favorite trailer, and then I completely forgot about this other trailer, which is probably <laughs> a really close second, because holy crap, if you had any doubts about this show, they should be thrown out the window right now. Yeah. So CCXP dropped a trailer for HBO's The Last of Us. Now, I like that first trailer that we got, and I've liked all the footage we've seen so far, but then they released this like full-fledged trailer. And guys, just like the Guardians trailer... I don't think I'm emotionally prepared for this show. Yeah. Like, I have played the first game repeatedly. I love the first game. The second game exists. I think there's a good story in the second game. I just think certain actions are out of order and the narrative fits better for a part three than a part two. But fair. But you can't critique The Last of Us Part Two for reasons. Ugh, I hate it. I hate the discourse around Last of Us Part Two. But getting back to the show. I genuinely don't think you could have done this more perfectly of like it's it's following the game, but it is not beholden to the game and it's doing its own thing, but it is following the game verbatim. And I'm so excited. I'm fully expecting the pilot episode to end just like the game ends that first section when you're carrying Sarah through don't, the street. No, 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 no. And it oh. ends with how it ends at the beginning. And then it just goes, The Last of Us. And that's the that's your first episode. You don't even meet you don't even meet Ellie or whatnot until like episode two or three. Um I love the dynamic already between Pedro Pascal's Joel and Bella Ramsey's Ellie of just like she does anything out of the normal. Don't be afraid to <laughs> she's okay. already messing with him yeah i'm just like it's oh fantastic. that's because that's ellie like she's only known the apocalypse so she's got this dark sense of humor that i just i love um but just little details are spot on like the locations the cinematography mm-hmm. the costume design mm-hmm. everything looks perfect and then at the end we are all about to crap our pants with the bloater because i if there's one part Going, you don't, you don't have to a hundred percent get it right. That that'd be okay. <laughs> but no, they decided, you know, let's make a bloater game accurate too. Cause screw the bloaters, I hate them so much. But Josh, the Last of Us TV series is this your most anticipated series of next year at this rate? At this rate, yeah. I I I don't see any other. I'm trying to think of like what possibly other shows are coming out next year that I could be stoked for, but like. This is like the trailer alone gets me super, 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 super hyped. Um, like you said, it is very close to the game, but it is not beholden to the game. Um, it is decided to do its own thing in a way. Uh, because I, I think it's very interesting that they seem to they, they want to follow the game storyline, but are still willing to do something different to bring it to to the, to the screen. Ellie's fantastic already. Joel's already in grumpy dad mode, and I love it so much. And I'm not emotionally ready for that first episode because, you know, it'd be the biggest twist. The the thing that they could do that I think will drag me in faster than having the oh, the first episode be the entire first what 15 minutes of the game, um, is that's not what they for the first thing that they do. 
because everyone in a, in a way everyone's expecting that and they hold off that reveal or they hold out that off for like episode four or five or something like that um now with that being said uh, if you open it open with that the, i i don't know if i'm going to be emotionally ready for the rest of the show so well because I, I i remember for those that don't know that i the opening of the last of us is legendary in that i i think it was like the first time for me playing a video game where i was like oh oh no oh this is gonna be very Oh, I'm not. I'm not ready for this emotionally. Um, so it, it it should be very good. I, I to me, I'm, I'm not. I'm not like hesitant at all. I, I I think you and I we were already going to see this this show, um, but now we're definitely gonna. We will be there with bells on. <laughs> the opening of Last of Us, the first one especially, is one yes. of those of like even people that don't really backseat watch video games. Like if you're doing the beginning. They'll like kind of peek their head around the corner and then like once um, Tommy and Joel are driving, then they'll kind of sit mm-hmm. down and then what happens with Sarah, they'll be bawling alongside of you and then just says <laughs> the last of us. And you're going, that's that's the start of the game and you're going. Yes, because <laughs> I so I remember watching that for the first time in college and I was being very confused because. You start playing as Sarah, and I'm just going, well, she doesn't look like the girl on the cover of the game, but yeah. I guess things change over time. <gasps> oh, I understand now, and why Joel has his broken watch. And again, Pedro Pascal, give him the Emmy already, because he just... What? I'm not family? No, you're cargo. And I'm going, <laughs> oh, to oh, go oh. from that to killing every freaking firefly on the planet to save your surrogate daughter. I I know this will get multiple seasons. And I didn't love how they pulled off Last of Us 2, but I think the narrative is there. It's just out of order. But if we get to Ellie finding out what Joel did as a show, mm-hmm. you lied to me. You took the choice out of my hands. I cannot wait to be emotionally destroyed by that scene <laughs> also i need to see the harafes i need to see ellie pet a giraffe i need the feels yes. I, mm, I need, i'm getting so amped for the show man i it how so, I don't so, so get let, me, it. let me ask you because this is like this is like our first like full length trailer isn't it i believe so yeah so second so technically we have another trailer on the way i don't need another one uh, so, I don't think we will get another one. The show comes out in mid January. Oh, you're right. So we shouldn't get another one. So that oh, dude. So so it's not. It, it might be in the the uh, the promotional material maybe then, where she like they get to pet the giraffe. But I, uh, dude, I they mm, better have her face. Well, so wild to see Pedro Pes- Pestel go from the man, the masked space daddy who will take care of you know this little alien who he does not need to take care of and like will kill hundreds of people for to going from that to <laughs> you're not family you're cargo <laughs> like oh okay baby let's go i'm so ready i'm so ready for the show yeah i just I, and i know some people are like he doesn't look like joel you can change stuff up like it's fine as long as the essence of the character is still there. Does he have some facial hair and does he wear flannel? That's all I really care about. <laughs> that, that's and is he grumpy? Then, that's the only thing you need to know about Joel. <laughs> speaking of grumpy, you got Nick Offerman who looks perfect. Dude. I'm just like, just yes. And then you got, the, I'm sure they're gonna do the cannibal subplot. I'm very curious to see that part when mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ellie more or less snaps him. That. That section of the game is so tense. I cannot wait to see that. Uh, just the more I see, the more I need to see this show immediately. I'm I don't need any more trailers, honestly. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I I'm I'm super stoked. I'm to the point that I might actually go watch a playthrough or something like that. Yeah, just I'm gonna, to get I need ready to go for back the and play the original again. I think I I have ne- I have never finished it. <gasps> so I know I know sacrilege. Uh, but it's, I don't think I have enough time <laughs> to to finish it before before the show comes out. Excuse me. So we'll see what happens. Lastly, for our trailers that dropped around CCXP. Um, look, I know a lot of y'all are hyped for this trailer, but I, 
Y'all lost your mind, but I can help you find it. Um, <laughs> Transformers Rise of the Beast dropped their trailer. And guys, guys, we've been down this road before. Do not get suckered in by Transformers trailers. That is how they get you. It is a pyramid scheme, man. They it's an L- MLM. <laughs> every Transformers trailer, besides the first one, and even then, the first one kind of had some overhype on its trailers. Every Transformers trailer, like, we learned from the mistakes of our last one. Here's a great new looking action packed Transformers movie. And I'm just going, oh, yay. And you see it. Well, that sucked. I better not do it again. Guess what I'm not going to do? I'm going to do it again. <laughs> And then they do it again. And then you're just like, wow, that sucked. But then you see the trailer for the next one. You're like, wow, they re- must have really learned their lesson. And they don't. They still make them even longer. And also people be like, but this is a reboot. Yeah, so was Bumblebee. So I'm already coming to this movie with a prejudice like all hell. Because this more or less kind of takes Bumblebee out of canon. This is not a sequel to Bumblebee. This is a reboot of a reboot. Like Bumblebee was supposed to reboot. None of us saw that in theaters, unfortunately, because it's the best Transformers movie. All you had to do was just copy Iron Giant, basically, and swap out Hogarth, yeah. Hogarth for Haley Steinfeld, which is always an upgrade. But this, we're not continuing, Bumblebee. We get this. I know some people grew up with uh, the Beast Wars stuff and Optimus Primal. I'm not overly familiar with it. It just looks like Transformers to me. There's, I know some people are like, oh, it looks, it looks great, it looks fresh, it looks different. I'm just like, it looks like Transformers. But also, I'm coming at this from, I like Bumblebee and the first Transformers. I can at least watch the second one. It's, it yeah. gets progressively worse from there. But I, I can have fun with the first one. But I didn't grow up as a diehard Transformers fan. So I'm just kind of going, I just want a good movie. I had one in Bumblebee, but you decided to kill it with this. Now, I trust Stephen Capel Jr., who is the director of this, who did Creed 2. I thoroughly enjoyed Creed 2. But there is nothing in this trailer that makes me go, oh, y'all have learned your lesson. You're going to give me a good Transformers movie now. And I'm sure I have more anger to this because of what it is doing to Bumblebee. It all is forgiven if Haley Steinfeld shows them in the next trailer. But I, for all I know, I think Bumblebee is... That timeline's gone because not enough of us saw it in theaters. But also, maybe don't release your movie around Aquaman, which destroyed all other box office competition, including Mary That's Poppins awesome. Returns. Yeah. Uh, but Josh, Rise of the Beast trailer. I am hyped for this. Of are you course kidding me? You are. I don't care that I die on my horse here. <laughs> I am so hyped for it. Uh, partly because, like, I, I will say this. My caveat is... I'm excited because I grew up on the Beast Wars stuff. But when they said we're doing a Beast Wars movies, a movie, I didn't think we'd be doing like, because uh, apparently we can't do a Transformers movie without human beings, apparently, even though there's no human beings in Beast Wars. Um, so, yeah, there's that caveat. But you know what? Um, you know, everything looks good to me. Um, all of the, the transfer, the transformations seem like they're, they are smoother. Um, it looks like, uh, like they're going to be doing some interesting things with the transforming. Like we always had those questions like, all right, so what happens if somebody sits in the car while they transform? Like what happened? They do something like that in the trip there's a lot of i think really cool stuff that i think they're going to do um and getting someone who is like the director of creed 2 behind the movie and directing it from from a different perspective that's not michael bay um i think this movie has loads more potential than really any of them have had uh it is unfortunate of what they're doing to to bumblebee and basically saying like that that movie does not exist anymore sorry that's not canon um but it's beast wars (laughs) i'm i'm just so stoked like i love the cheetah guy and like seeing him running like the cheetah and then transforming into uh, it was like I was a kid again. I, I'm not like that with a lot of things, but like, and truth be told, I'm not even that 
big of a Transformers fan, but uh, it was kind of like watching the Mario car, the Mario trailer and being like, you know, I don't consider myself a Beast Wars fan. And then seeing like stuff happen in front of me, I was like, oh, I am suddenly ready, really ready for this. Okay, let's go. Like, so I don't know. I, I understand where you're coming from, but it's really hard for me to not get absolutely hyped about this. And I get that. Um, like, I'm sure there's stuff that I would get hyped for that no one else gets hyped for, i.e. Robin Hood anything. Um, <laughs> but then again, we don't get Robin Hood things. And I get that I'm absolutely in a minority here. I see a lot of people excited for this. Awesome. I'm just very curious because Transformers had diminishing returns as movies yes, progressed and people caught on, which is, you know, why they catered movies specifically to the foreign markets after a certain point. Uh, and yep. rebooted with Bumblebee, and Bumblebee didn't do well because people were so used to Transformers sucking. Um, so I'll I'll be curious how this does. Um, I will say it feels closer to classic Transformers, mm -hmm. but I I'm still just like I don't really know what to make this. You you gotta earn my trust because you've you've spent the better part of 15 years destroying said trust in the name yeah. Transformers. I, I i completely agree i like seeing the um optimus optimus prime redesign primal uh, oh again. no you're talking optimus prime optimus prime redesign again um was kind of weird uh like we've had three different versions of them now so it's uh, probably more actually but like it's still like like you said like as hyped as i am about this i am very much like okay cool great great trailer uh but what does that end up uh, what you know what's the end up uh, end product going to be lastly for our news we've got granted these are just reports yes but it's ones that i tend to believe at least like this this sounds like something that i could absolutely see being discussed internally within marvel and that is that Marvel, after some fan feedback about Phase 4, they're kind of reevaluating what they're doing with Phases 5 and 6. Now, what that means, reevaluating, uh, I don't really know exactly, but I can wager some guesses. But I do find it funny. Once again, we're going to beat the dead Bob horse here. I think it's funny that this quote-unquote course correction, and more or less when fans really started to have issues with Marvel, i.e. Phase 4, was right around the same exact window of some bald-headed evil genius. Well, not genius, just bald-headed <laughs> <Not> evil. <laughs> just bald-headed evil that is Bob Chapek, who um took over in 2020, so right when Phase 4 was starting, and right when he gets fired around the time of Black Panther Wakanda Forever is when Phase 4 is ending. Weird. What what a weird coincidence that <laughs> what a weird coincidence that the phase that people had the most issues with just happened to be when Chapek was in charge and was more or less going quantity over quality, whereas Iger is very much a creative. Granted, I know some of these projects were in long development beforehand. Yes. I just cannot help but laugh at the sheer coincidence that Marvel has its worst phase by far, phase four, and it just happens to perfectly align with when Chapek was in charge and Kevin Feige had middleman with Kareem Daniel that he had to report to and no longer Papa Iger here. I just think that coincidence is super funny. Now, what do we think this course correction slash Marvel recalibration actually means? I think they're going to delay some stuff by a solid year or two and just space out releases now. We're going to go back to like three, maybe four Marvel movies a year and then maybe mm -hmm. one or two shows. We're just going to space stuff out. I think anything that's announced is fair game. But for phase six, I bet you they're going to act some stuff because they never actually announced what's happening for phase six. Um, I also wouldn't be surprised if they start doing more of those. Um, one-off specials like Werewolf by Night and the Marvel and the Guardians Christmas special because that's, I think, much easier to produce. Only 40 minutes of content than eight hours, so to speak. Uh, I, even though there's no official outlets saying this, I believe this because Kevin Feige is one to listen to fan feedback, and I'm sure he is well aware of the criticisms of Phase 4. And I yes. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we find out at a later date, but 
probably not from Kevin because he's too polite to say so himself, whether he said, hey, guys, I had my hands tied. I tried my best, but I had bosses that were different for phase four. I was trying to do certain yeah. things, um, but they overruled me. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that played a factor. But, Josh, Marvel is saying that not Marvel's not saying it, but people are speculating that Marvel will be quote unquote course correcting for phases five and six. What do you think that means? I I'm hesitant to, to believe it, mainly because Quantum Mania is right around the corner. So it's like, okay, cool. So a lot of phase five is already in production, more or less. Um, whatever, you know, various phases of production, obviously. So changes could definitely be made, but um, I am more leaning to towards the, I would be surprised if some stuff gets delayed or just pushed back. I wouldn't be surprised if they have a reannouncement of, instead of doing like, hey, this is pushed back, this is pushed back, or this is pushed, at separate times, having it keeping it all and sending it out at one point at, at one time being like, Hey, this is the new slate for phase five. If the, if they end up going in that direction, um, I wouldn't be surprised then if that's the case of maybe a month or two after that, getting an actual look at phase six, because I think for a while there, they didn't know what they could do with phase six because they didn't know what was going to be allowed to happen. And I, I, like you said, things getting pushed back a couple, like a year or something like that, I wouldn't be surprised uh, because that was a lot of content in a short amount of time. And I really don't think that that would have been to uh, Marvel's benefit at all, period. So. I think this is a if they do anything, it'll be a good decision. I also hope that with phases five and six, we better, at least by phase six, get more clarity as to where we're going. Like, yes. I get that this is supposed to be the multiverse saga, but by the end of phase one, Avengers had teamed up and they defeated Loki. Where are we leaving our characters at the end of phase four? Everyone is kind of just scattered, and there wasn't an overall reason for phase yeah. four i don't think and i know kevin Feige be like well we're introducing new characters we're setting the groundwork for future stuff i'm just like but you say that but all the previous phases before this had definitive start and end goals of just like yes there was a theme to each phase itself but this one you get so many characters and so many storylines that are scattered that i just don't know how they're gonna pay off of like yeah, we have Harry Styles as Thanos' brother. Is that really important? Um, you've got potentially the Thunderbolts. How do they factor into the larger narrative? Got so many dangling threads that I'm just like, is this yeah. like Clea at the end of in the Multiverse of Madness? I'm just like, is this actually important? Or is this <laughs> or is this like comic books of we're teasing future storylines, hoping that if we get enough readers for this, we can continue this specific angle. <laughs> it's it's uh hey guys, we have the rights to these characters once again. Hey, you wanna see Except them? Like, more apparently. Apparently. Um I which is really funny because today at work I had a discussion about um copyright law and like um intellectual property law uh with a coworker of mine. Um and it was so fascinating for for because it started from the like Alona Holmes situation. And he was like, well, they can't do that because, you know, Sherlock Holmes is just an idea, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, OK, no, 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 no. Let, 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 let me let me show you some some weird gray lines here, dude. Um, anyway, with that being said, I agree that like we, there's just not a like I, I want to say, like, there's no definitive direction because. It, it, the, our only, you know, comparison is Mar the Marvel is Marvel Phase One and Two, you know, directly. So it's it's a little hard to be like, oh well, I guess you know they're just figuring it out. It was like, okay, guys, but like, you've had over a decade of storytelling, uh, you know, you can't. There's not a lot you can do here, man. Like, uh, so we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. Um, I wouldn't, like you said, I wouldn't be surprised if we get some announcements of, of a few delays, a few like rearranging of things. Um, I am hoping 
as much as I know as you are, and I know as a lot of fans are, that Quantum Mania gives us a launching point. It gives us a point of like clarity. Okay, Give us some clarity. clarity. We know where we're going now. Okay, cool. Let's go. Um, but I guess we'll find out here <laughs> fairly soon, I guess. As per usual, this week's episode is sponsored by T Public, your one stop shop for all things Uncharted Media merch, whether it is t shirts, mugs, hoodies, whatever you want with the Uncharted Media logo or other fantastic designs on it. Go support the show in that way. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to us on whatever platform you're listening to us on, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or YouTube, and help us get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube. That's our main goal going forward. Now! Let's talk bombshell about some... time yeah, bombshell time because as we joked in the intro gosh audibles are a thing aren't they yes uh, they are we were thrown for a big one we were going to talk about trailers that were better than the actual movies talk about all the trailers that we had this past weekend and then the hollywood reporter drops this massive article about james gunn and peter saffron's changing direction for dc which Oh boy, this is going to be tough to talk about because it's like pulling out a splinter that's infected of like, it's going to suck either way, whether you leave it in or whether you take it out. Either way, someone's going to be in pain and there's mm-hmm. there's a lot of pain going to be going around here. So, first of can, all. Can I, can I read the opening statement of this article? Because yes, I, lo- I, yes, I love it so much. Uh, call it DC Rebirth or DC Genesis. Maybe call it Identity Crisis or Flashpoint. These titles of past DC comic events series aptly describe the state of Warner Brothers DC movies, which are on the cusp of a new era, but not before a potentially messy transition period. Um, which, like, yeah, that's exactly what's happening right now. And this this article definitely uh, it brings a lot of things to light. I think things you and I suspected already, but but it was it was a little disheartening to hear it confirmed, um, in, in a lot of ways. Yeah, it was like big sweeping stuff just across the board. So first of all, it seems like the Snyder versus dead, which. This should surprise no one. Even before the discovery acquisition of Warner Brothers, it seemed like the Warner Brothers executives were pretty much like stamping that out going, guys, this is not the route we're going. We just did the Snyder cut just to try and boost subscriber numbers on HBO Max. And that didn't end up really working for us. We we spent $70 million and it didn't actually help us all that much. (laughs) Even though Josh and I both agree that it's the superior cut of the movie minus the last, 20 minutes but that's a topic for another last day. 20 minutes is a pointless yeah yeah we don't talk about that but basically it seems like james gunn is kind of cutting all that out um and unfortunately anything even remotely connected to it it seems like this universe might be a completely fresh reset which sucks but and i'm saying this as a diehard henry cavill fan it's probably for the best just because of how muddy the franchise is currently of just like well we like this thing but not this thing this thing's great this thing's not working for us and then you throw in stuff with the rock and the justice society that doesn't really timeline wise make sense with what was happening with the snyder stuff i get that people want to pick and choose but at the same time it probably just muddies the water even more so i get why they want to start fresh it's still is going to hurt fans for a little bit until we start getting these movies and see if we actually like them or not. So here's what we mean of, Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. So Patty Jenkins, wonder woman three is dead basically. So uh, it seems like Patty Jenkins brought forth her treatment for wonder woman three. And uh, the head honchos were just like, thanks. Uh, But this doesn't really fit into our future direction for DC. And we won't be moving forward with Wonder Woman 3. Whether that means they need her to revise her script. Yes. And start over into something that fits into this universe. Or if they're completely starting scratch from scratch, we don't know. I think a lot of people are just going, Gal Gadot's not coming back as Wonder Woman. This movie's dead. And that p- could potentially be the case. But it could also very well be Patty Jenkins needs to start to script over again to fit something else, like a yeah, direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going that I think that could be an option as well. 
yeah, it's not like they they were like, you know what, that's great, thanks, but no thanks, you're fired. That's not that, what happened. That could have been, but at the same time, I don't think it's worded in this article that's definitively yeah, the, the only option here. Correct. The, the way it is worded is the, you know, she brought her treatment, they said no, uh, and because of the direction that they were going to go. Um, I also want, the, it, the article does a good job of pointing out that they are supposed to, I think they said gun in, um, <clears throat> Peter Gun Saffron. and Saffron are, are they're supposed to bring, they have a meeting with Zavla, Zavla ne next week. Yes. Uh, with, about everything. this. So to present everything. And so like nothing, I didn't realize that they had been working on this since October. Mm -hmm. um, so they've had several months um, and they have several paths to that they could potentially go. So uh, to me, that says, um, thank you. Uh, we don't want to go move forward with this movie for now. Uh, at least not the one that you're pitching us because it doesn't fit in any of the, the paths that we're looking at. Um, but that does, that does not mean that, you know, she's out or Gal Gadot's out, Gal Gadot is out completely either. So and here's, and here's where I burn all the bridges and alien everyone left. That's listening. As much as I don't mind Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman or even the Wonder Woman movies that she's in, well, the first one's great and the second one exists. If we recast Wonder Woman going forward in DCEU, I will not be mad in the slightest. I'm just going to say yeah. it. I think Gal Gadot has improved significantly as an actress over time, but I still don't think she was ever the best option for the role. I don't think her acting is particularly better than other options out there for the role. Um, yes. She's a lovely individual. I love seeing her in interviews. She seems like a joy of a human to work with but I never thought she was the best actress for the role. She's done a lot with the role as well. Like using the platform to Absolutely. actually, actually do good in the, on the planet and stuff like that. So, but i like, I kind of agree on, and I hate that. I never wanted to be put as a fan in, the, in this position where I'm like, you know, if they recast her, it's not that big of a deal to me because honestly, the first Wonder Woman movie is pretty good. It, Almost perfect, it, except for the end. It, it, exactly. It, it literally like does so much for female superheroes in that it's like, oh, look, you, you can do like really interesting stories, guys. Like it. Like, yeah, it doesn't have to be this like throwaway gag like the the Black Wid Black Widow movie. Um, I. It, it, but with that being said, with me saying like it's not gonna hurt, I think necessarily that much if we lose Gal Gadot or uh, um, I, I, it still sucks. Get rid of like, Ezra. I it, it really sucks. I, I I think there's a lot of uh stuff that's coming down the pipe that like depending on and we'll get into it here uh, shortly. But that I think again as questionable as some of Zaslov's can um, you know, decisions have been lately. They're at least ready to make the tough decisions. Cause like, um, as this much is as piss I off a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, I let's get into it though. Like, cause as much as I do not want, <laughs> I, I do not think the flash movie needs to happen. Um, I understand the hit that they're going to take if they just, straight up don't release it which according to this article looks like it's actually a thing they're considering which is insane yeah so the flash the problem is i think the old regime was so gung-ho on the flash being the thing that resets everything of like yeah yes. we're gonna reset this whereas now that the Flash takes place before Aquaman and Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is the last of the old regime before James Gunn takes over, I'm just like, so the Flash isn't a reset point, or yes. is it? Like, are we just going to completely just start fresh and ignore everything? Just like, ignore everything, we're going this direction now. Um, the, the Which Flash... is like, uh, for a mainstream audience, you can't do that. that. That just will not work. In a world that Marvel exists, you can't do that. Yeah, so the Flash... Is getting a little complicated because supposed to be, supposedly there's cameos galore, but it's cameos of people that are Snyderverse era. So like Jason Momoa's Aquaman, Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, 
and Henry Cavill's Superman, who is very much up in the air right now, but not in the good way, not the flying high, more like he's <laughs> grounded again. Because supposedly Henry Cavill had a cameo that teased him appearing more in the future going forward, and one of his discoveries on the fence about whether or not they would even have that cameo in there if it basically is promising something to fans that they're not going to get. Oh, so like Black Adam then. Um, <laughs> which that's something else that we'll get into in a little bit here, but um, I'm still excited about the Flash movie just because I like the character, but Flash is another one like Gal Gadot. If, if we scrap this casting and start with somebody else, I wouldn't mind. I'd actually rather keep Gal Gadot than Ezra Miller. I've never liked Ezra Miller's Flash. I think yeah. that is... They are so far he, off of what the character is supposed to be. You've brought it up before, Josh. I think he's a perfect um, Bart Allen, but mm -hmm. not so much a Barry Allen. Yeah, which absolutely. Just like, eh, just when you reboot it, just do a different Flash. Just do like Wally or Jay. For the love of God, please do Jay. Um, <laughs> go Impulse! All the way to Impulse! Go, go, go! <laughs> yes, Jesse Quick. Why not? Um... <laughs> But so Henry Cavill is supposed to have a cameo. Now they're just like, well, if we might not go forward with Henry Cavill, then I just yeah. well script scrap Which this. I do appreciate the them taking that into consideration. At least they're vocalizing that as a company. Whereas, like, I can guarantee, it, like, we'll get into here towards the end here. I don't think his appearance in Black Adam was really something that they were that they quote unquote cleared. Um, because of someone deciding to do his own thing, apparently. Because he was um, afraid the movie would underperform without it. Yes. So I, I at least like respect Warner Brothers for to be like, yeah, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't add that because we don't want to promise something that potentially we won't be, we might not be doing. Um, so at least they're verbalizing. To me, this article does a lot to say like, hey. Like there's potential that this everything can really, really, really change and look completely different. So let's try to not like promise something that we're not going to do, especially in this time of transition. Um, it tells me that they're they're acknowledging how tough this conversation is is going to be, and how tough this transition is going to be. Um, it also tells me that they have potentially they have a respect for the for the fans that they did not have before. Um, which is they're willing to put their foot is, down uh, on some things. Yes, absolutely. So the other thing is, so Wonder Woman three is pretty much dead. Man of Steel two is very much in limbo slash on life support. But here's why I'm more optimistic about this one than some other people. I know some people are already ringing the bells, going, "Henry Cavill's dead as Superman yet again." I'm just going. So here's the thing. All this is stuff for James Gunn and Peter Safran as their pitch to bring to David Zaslav. It hasn't been cleared yet, but they're like, here's the direction we would like to go. David Zaslav has final say on everything. According to reports, David Zaslav is a big Henry Cavill Superman fan. He could veto choices and say, hey, you could do whatever we want, but I would really like it. Nudge, nudge, nudge. I would really appreciate it. Nudge, nudge, nudge. If you kept Henry as Superman, mm -hmm. swap out what other other pieces you want, but keep this one piece. I'm not saying that will happen, but supposedly Superman is very high on Zaslav's priority list. I have said repeatedly that I thought it was interesting that when Zaslav and Discovery took over Warner Bros., the first thing he said was, we have such famous IP that is being underutilized, and the first name he said was Superman. They have yes. plans for Superman. There's no way they're yes. going to leave him off to the side. Whether it is Henry Cavill or not remains to be seen. Here's where I will continue to piss people off. I love Henry Cavill's Superman. He's one of my favorite castings of all time, whether or not I like his movies. But if he does not come back and they choose to recast him, I'll be hurt for a little bit, but I'll understand it because my love of Superman trumps my love of Henry Cavill's performance as Superman. I care more right. about the character than who is playing him as much as I love the role. So... Gotta win me over whoever the new Superman is, just like Tyler Hecklin did for Superman and Lois. I don't love him more than Henry Cavill, but I love what he brings to the table. I'm just not willing to rule out that Henry Cavill is dead yet. I do find it interesting that in this Hollywood Reporter article, they said Man of Steel 2 was in development with Andy Muschietti, the director of The Flash. He was hoping to be behind the camera for it, and he was like, yeah, I would do a Superman movie. And they were 
planning on doing a more bright and hopeful Superman in the style of the classic Richard Donner Superman movies. I'm going, that's what we've been asking for. So I think certain projects are still in holding patterns. We're going to get something Superman related. There's no way we don't. It's yes. just a matter of will it be Cavill? I know some people are already jumping the gun saying he's gone again. I say there there could be a chance of that happening. But I say hold the phone for now until we get something official because we have been down the the boy who cried Cavill route so many times of he's back, he's back, only to be disappointed, or he's never coming back, he's never coming back. Then he shows up in Black Adam, which is something else entirely. Um yeah, so let's get into that. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to set so, the stage here, Josh, for it? Oh, God. I just, okay, so a big thing apparently that's happening right now, according to the article, is that, you know, of course, you know, the cameo in Black Adam is a big thing. Um, I still have yet to watch Black Adam, unfortunately, um, I because I have to pay to rent it. So, well, you know, whatever. Um, I bet the, you they drop it on HBO Max right before Christmas. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. That's kind of also as a quote unquote surprise. So, yeah, also, I'm, I'm, yeah, that's kind of what I'm why I'm just waiting. Um, <laughs> I so the biggest issue here apparently is that Dwayne Johnson is fighting hard against Gunn about the changes, which is interesting to me that an actor has that kind of power. Um, at least vocally. But Josh, um, he's been attached to this project for 15 years. I literally do not care. Um, <laughs> like, I, 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 Black Adam could have been like one of the biggest movies in the DC universe ever and could have been amazing. And I still would have seen her and been like, yes, Dwayne, we get it. But um, that doesn't mean that you get any kind of say in, in the boardroom section. Um, unfortunately, being an actor in, in a movie and being in the, cast in that role for 15 years doesn't give you a seat at the table. Um, it's just very, very interesting to me that somebody would sit here and look at someone who has a proven track record like Gunn. And if, if Gunn was like, I don't know, just not an accomplished guy and didn't have a very, like a very specific taste that was like, terrible like if they brought michael bay in or something I, and he was like no i'm i'm against this blah, blah, blah. like it's it's different than him being like no 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 this guy who has proven the success in superhero movies he's not for me his v vision doesn't make sense to me um that doesn't sit well with me that tells me somebody is looking at his ego and his the character that he plays as a bigger deal in the universe than it actually is which is why it doesn't make sense he's an anti-hero anyway which i could rant about this a lot but which, I, i'm gonna this yeah. is nothing new for the rock with the black adam character we had heard reports months before black adam came out and he even said as so much of himself of black adam was supposed to be in the first shazam movie and he vetoed it it's like no nah, man i think it makes more sense that shazam gets his own origin and i get my own origin then then I, mean, I guess someday we'll fight i'm just like i <sighs> yeah except for the fact that so uh how it should have ended came out with how black adam should have ended today and the whole time batman calls him black shazam and I'm just going, yes. that's so much better. That's so accurate because whether The Rock wants to admit it or not, you are a side character. Shazam. Your your journeys, it's a symbiotic relationship. What happens to one of you must certainly happen to the other, in the, words of, in the words of The Phantom Menace. Um, but I think he didn't want to show up in Shazam because Shazam paints him as the bad guy, and he's so Gung ho about Black Adam is an anti-hero. Gosh dang it! He he's he's cool. He's edgy. He's heroic. He just kills people. I'm going. So any one of Zack Snyder's heroes, like <laughs> what in the movie, he's not yes. actually an anti-hero. Like he doesn't do a whole lot bad. Like I think his Nando V movies that had a great video about Namor is a better anti-hero than Black Adam is, and I completely agree. The problem that The Rock is having now. And he'll say otherwise, but Black Adam will end up losing the studio money. And they'll yeah, be like, absolutely. And he'll be like, no, we were actually profitable by about 50 million. I'm going, uh, uh, your budget that's wasn't. That's not that in the, in the movie industry, that's not profitable. But even then, you can look at the numbers, and if you actually break it down, you're like, no, actually, you're not. Like the budget, 
The budget being reported is 190 million, and there's no way. There's supposedly, supposedly the might actually be closer to 230, and then they never advertise how much marketing is. But then the theaters take a cut of that too. And there was something about like Warner Brother. He's like, well, it's doing well on digital. Like, yeah, but that's that doesn't factor into a movie's initial box office. Correct. It never has, never will. And so The Rock. Like Alabama fans trying to get into the college playoff, there he's like picking and choosing <laughs> specific stats that support his case, saying we were successful in this endeavor. When in reality, no, because he's claimed he's like Black Adam made just as much as the first Captain America movie, so we're setting the groundwork just like Marvel did. I'm going well. The first Captain America came out in 2011. Mm-hmm. The superhero movie landscape was completely different in 2011, but also was made for a whole heck of a lot less money, had a lot yes. less of an issue with production that caused the box office to overinflate. He's like, well, we made more money than Shazam. Shazam cost $62 million to make, and it made 350 Like, Shazam didn't destroy the box office, but it was profitable. The <laughs> yes, Rock, which is why it's getting a second one. And then they're just like, and then the Rock's like, yeah, this movie is profitable. That's why Hawkman's getting a solo movie, and James Gunn's going, "Are you sure about that?" Insert John <laughs> Cena, who's John Cena. But here's what I'm actually really confused about: if James Gunn is scrapping a whole bunch of stuff, actually, I'll I'll talk about this in a little bit. I'll keep finishing my Dwayne Johnson tangent here. The friction is coming between Dwayne Johnson's camp of going, Black Adam was profitable, when if you actually look at the stats and the analytics, it's really not. Um, but I do find it interesting that this his whole like pan- cherry-pick stats saying it was profitable comes a day after Variety writes this article saying it's going to yes. lose the studio 50 to $100 million. It's like, no, no. Uh, uh, like, no, it's not, like, no, it's not. I promise it's not. He's like <laughs> pouting like a child. No, no, I didn't have a flop. The Rock don't have flops. The Rock don't lose. I'm like, uh, are you sure about that? Um, because we remember Central Intelligence. It wasn't that big of a hit. I mean, uh, I but the yeah, thing is, The Rock is like touting, yeah, we we're going to make Justice Society spinoffs. We're going to, we brought back Henry Cavill. Like he's touting this universe, but he's not the one making the universe is the yes. thing. He's like, I've got all these plans. It's just like, well, you had plans back when it was Walter Hamada who is not yes. in charge anymore. Discovery's in charge, and they're putting somebody else in charge. It's, if you get a new boss at work, you still have to listen to that boss. You can't just be like, well, the old boss told me that I have this privilege, this job, and this responsibility. It's like, they're not in power anymore. I get The Rock's frustration, but at the same time, one, everybody's getting screwed here. Everyone seems like they're getting their stuff scrapped. Just because you took a decade longer than everyone else to make your movie... It doesn't mean I have sympathy for you. Like, I didn't hate Black Adam, but at the same time, I don't think it's a strong enough of a foundation to go forward with. And if everyone's getting scrapped, okay. Everyone's getting scrapped across the board. That I think that's a fair yeah, cutoff yeah, for yeah. everyone. Just because your name's The Rock doesn't mean you're above getting your projects canceled from time to time. I'm sorry it took you so long for your movie to get made, but maybe if you weren't so picky about what the movie would end up being, it would have come out a lot sooner because Which is, yeah, which is apparently what ended up happening because like, like, like you said, he could have showed up in um, Shazam, the first one, and that would have made perfect sense. Uh, but he decided, no, that that's not what I want to do. Um, that being aside, it, them scrapping everything across the board is very interesting because they just dropped a, a like literally like I think like earlier this week dropped a poster like a little teaser poster for for Blue Beetle. So it was like, is that is that in the clear? I'm confused. That's I don't in know 2023. what was. I mean, anything in yes, 2023 but... I think is safe. It's anything post Aquaman, which is the last movie in 2023. It's post Aquaman that we have questions about. <sighs> yeah, we'll see. We will see because. They're even talking about not like they're not they're even like the kind of one of the last little points that we wanted to touch on here um, was that they're looking at like getting rid of Aqua Momoa's Aquaman, but not Momoa. We'll keep him. We'll keep him as uh, we'll keep him as Lobo, which I don't hate. <laughs> Honestly, that's one of those. I'm just hate. like I actually kind of trust that and like that yeah, more. Yeah, I like that a lot. Actually, that's I, I, I'm uncomfortable with how much I actually like that. Oh boy, <laughs> but 
but yeah, it, it it's like there's re, there's reports that you know Gunn uh, went and met with the the Batgirl um, directors and writers and kind of have a had a powwow with them. Um, from what it sounds like, at least at the very least, is that Gunn, Gunn is going from party to party and being like, hey. This is what we're what we're thinking. Is it possible you can? Uh, how how can we rewrite your your kind of story to kind of fit into this new avenue? Um, it will be interesting to see what ends up you know happening. But uh, Johnson throwing an actual fit on Twitter just is not going to be the thing. It's the easiest way to get you out of a job in this industry in that industry. Here, here's my big question, and I don't see a lot of other people talk about this yet, and I think it's worth mentioning, is, is this going to be a full reboot? Because I would, yeah. I'd have an easier time believing that it'll be a complete start-fresh reboot if James Gunn hadn't already done stuff that's existing in this current DC universe. He did The yeah. Suicide Squad using David Ayer's characters from Suicide Squad of Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. Granted, he wasn't around for very long, but... Jai Courtney's Captain Boomerang was in it for quite a mm-hmm. bit. Amanda Waller, all the the cast of like all the people behind the computer, basically, and then even Peacemaker. Technically, I would still think was an extension of that. Is he gonna scrap that stuff and just start everything over? Is he gonna pick and choose? In which case, if you're picking and choosing those, why aren't you picking and choosing some other things? Like yes, it, it's like. Brian Singer coming back and doing X-Men Days of Future Past after he directed the first two X-Men. He scrapped those in that timeline. Those don't exist anymore. He got rid of his own movies in that timeline. So is James Gunn going to do the same thing here? Yeah. Or is it going to be picking and choosing? In which case, I think picking and choosing kind of muddies the water. Yeah. If we got a fresh reboot, I expect this like new clean slate to be announced sometime in January now. And it's going to suck. People are going to yell and scream at each other for a little bit. Um, but I think James Gunn is willing to be the bad guy here and have both Snyder fans and Snyder haters rally together to hate James Gunn for a little bit. But when their anger subsides, they'll be like, okay, we might finally have some clear direction here. Maybe that's, maybe that's me being optimistic. I don't, I still don't hate James Gunn. I think this sucks, but it's the hard necessary choice that I think DC has been too afraid to do for too long and it's what they're hoping to do with the flash and they've wanted to do with the flash for years the flash has been a development hell for like five or six years of what are we going to do with this because they've always intended the flash to reset the timeline now that they will it's the thing we fans have been asking for is a fresh start now that we're getting it i don't think it's fair that we complain it's just a matter of we have to wait and see. We can come back to this in two or three years once these new movies start coming out, I think, of just like, yeah, they're scrapping everything potentially, potentially, potentially. <laughs> and I don't, again, we'll have to wait and see, but I think this is the very difficult choice that needed to happen, which is basically David Zaslav's 10 years so far with Warner Brothers Discovery in a nutshell. Choices people don't like, but they might have needed to happen. Yeah, absolutely. It's tough, too, because... I gen- gen- genuinely really, really like Gunn. And I think at the end of the day, um, what we do know about him as a person, um, I don't think he would have taken this job if without him realizing what all was going to be entailed. I, I Gunn strikes me as the kind of person to know what he's getting himself into at all times um i'm sure he was very aware of everything that was going to be going on going into making a suicide squad movie i'm sure he was very aware of everything that was going to be going on into going into making a this show nobody knew they needed in peacemaker um i do agree that it will not be a good look if he picks and choose, picks and chooses, and like keeps the stuff that keeps he his did, stuff. and then scraps everybody else's. Um, I want to give him the better the de- benefit of the doubt and say that's not something that he will do. Uh, that being said, it's a little tough because the stuff that he's done is some of the best DC live action content we've had in a long time. Um, so. 
I'm not 100 percent sure how to how he where they're gonna go with this. Uh, so I like you said, I think we're gonna have to have a lot of faith when it when it comes to uh, trying to figure out where they're gonna go, what DC is gonna do from here on out. Um, we're gonna have to you know scream into our closets into our pillow for a little bit and be mad and that's fine but um we're dc I think, fans we're kind of used to it by now yeah at this we're point used to pay. We'll, we'll go just go rewatch some animation <laughs> like we always do which i mean we didn't even talk about that because there's so many other news topics but apparently warner bros discovery sold dc animation to amazon in terms of just like yeah sold the rights to it or something so whether that means like the direct to dvd stuff like Superman, the man of tomorrow, though that library or like future stuff there, or because James Gunn has said we want to do movies, TV, and animation. So now I'm confused. Now what? Yeah. yeah, I just I don't like being in the back seat. I wish I was riding shotgun and could see the map too, but we're not allowed to know just yet. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know why uh Amazon is is buying DC Animation when they still haven't given us a season two of Invincible. <laughs> someday, maybe someday. someday. Someday, maybe we'll see. There's been, I love how it's been so long and we've had no like, hey, it's in development. Hey, this is the thing that we're doing. Like nothing at all. Period. Ah. <sighs> Well, what did you guys think? Have you read this Hollywood Reporter article? Do you think it's right that DC scrap everything? Do you think they should pick and choose certain pieces that they think are working? I'll be very curious to see your comments down below. Um, yeah, as always, let us know your thoughts on whatever the current situation is with DC and whatever thoughts you have. Let us know down in the comments below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to us on whatever audio platform you're listening to. It's on it's iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube. And if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube. Help us get to 1,000 subscribers. And as always, Stay sharp, movie guys and gals.